My name's James Holland from Palo Alto Networks. Today, we're going to show you a classic use case for automation within network security. Like many organizations, you might be looking to or already deploying applications, data, services into public cloud. We've got AWS shown here on the right, other clouds are available. What you're going to need to be able to communicate is obviously connectivity from your existing locations into that public cloud. One option for that is an IPsec VPN. What we've got for today's demonstration is a scenario where there is an on-prem location depicted on the left, could be a branch office, headquarters, data center, and there's a VM series, Palo Alto Network's next generation firewall there on the left. And we're gonna build connectivity from there to our AWS VPC virtual private cloud. The way we're gonna achieve that today is fully automated using Ansible automation platform from Red Hat. Building connectivity between two separate network locations like this with a VPN has many, many tasks. The VPN configuration itself, but also BGP, for example, for routing, as well as the firewall rules to allow access. Ansible automation platform is going to do all of that for us. It's gonna start by configuring the AWS side. Once that's configured, it's gonna retrieve the IP addresses and other configuration data that the firewall needs to build the VPN towards AWS and for AWS to accept the connectivity from the firewall. And at the end of the demonstration, we'll have a fully working IPsec VPN and data will be able to pass from the on-prem host on the left to the host in AWS on the right. This demonstration was recorded on a live webinar. Let's get started. Just to show uh, this is fair play, we've got um, at the moment no customer gateways, virtual private gateways or site-to-site -site VPN connections in AWS. Don't worry if you don't know what those are, that's just the constructs AWS uses to build a VPN. And here I've got my uh, VM series, uh, which I need to log into again. And that is here, so I can show you that at the moment there's no VPNs configured there either. Uh, no VPN gateways, so there's nothing there at the moment. Uh, I'll show you that in the network tab. So we've got no IKE gateways and we've got no IPsec tunnels. Fantastic. So all I'm going to need is I've got this VPC here. Uh, so I'm going to need the VPC ID. That's what I'm going to connect to. Going back to this scenario, you know, it might be that this is the kind of thing you need to do multiple times because if you start connecting uh, or replicating your, your data or your applications or your services across multiple regions within public cloud, which is a good idea for redundancy and resiliency, you might want to start linking those to the local point of presence that they have to the closest point of presence you have for reasons of obviously data speed, data latency, things like that. So good thing to want to automate, but we'll pick a VPC that's in the region we're interested in. And then here in Ansible Automation Platform, um, what I've got is um, a couple of jobs, um, that one that's going to build and one that's going to do the pinging for me to, to, uh, to show the, uh, the full scenario. And I put them together in a workflow that we're going to launch now. Um, so there is, in fact, it's pretty populated, but there's my VPC ID. Um, what are we talking? It's 17.35 right now in my time. So I'm going to call the project that just to show uh, something interesting. And we're going to launch this. So the way this workflow works at the moment, I'm doing the ping first, just to show that at the moment, if this chap tries to ping over to this one over here, it's not going to work. So we're expecting that task to fail. Um, and then after that, it's going to go through and do all of the build. So there we go, the pings failed as we expected. Um, now we're getting into the build portion. So I'll show you what this looks like. So I know some of you on the call will be, uh, will be technical folks and you'll be interested in, the, uh, in what's actually happening under the hood here. Um, so there's going to be a whole bunch of tasks here. Uh, I'll give you a short summary of what they're going to look like. But uh, one of the first things we did was just check the firewalls up and ready. And then we got straight into the AWS configuration work. So I'm going to leave that running in the background. And I'll go back over here. And you saw it briefly. But these are all the steps that you would need to go through. So on the AWS side of things, we need, and I said, it doesn't really matter if you know or don't know what these things are, but these are the things you need. It's like the shopping list of how do I create a VPN? You need a virtual gateway. You need a customer gateway. So those are the, effectively the two ends of the VPN. The virtual gateway is the AWS end. The customer gateway is you defining your end of the VPN, like your CPE end, for example. Then you need the site-to-site -site VPN itself, which uses those two gateways. 
Um, and then because we want this to all be automated and nicely, uh, nicely dynamic, we're going to run BGP across to do all the routing for us. So we need to enable root propagation for that to work. Again, if you didn't know about that with AWS, don't worry about it. It's just some config you've got to do. Then we have the PanOS side of the VPN. So this is where we need to go into the firewall and create things like tunnel interfaces. But then we'd need to go back to AWS and check what are the phase one settings, the IKE settings that I need to match in order for phase one of the VPN to come up. And then I'd need to go and configure an IKE profile for that. Then I need to go back to AWS and wonder what IP addresses did it give me for the VPN endpoints? Because by default, they're random. They're picked at random from AWS's pool of IP addresses by default. So you need to go and collect them, copy and paste them, and put them into IKE gateways. Then we come to phase two. There's a whole bunch of phase two settings. So you might have different authentication and encryption protocol settings. You might have Diffie-Hellman group settings and perfect forward secrecy, all these kind of things. So you've got to go and check what AWS do on their side, match it on the PanOS side. Then that's the kind of the tunnel bit done. So then we talk about BGP. I have to go and get the BGP peering IP addresses, which will be inside the tunnel, get those from AWS's console, then start configuring the firewall side. So configure my peers, put them in a group, make sure we're redistributing all the routes. Then obviously it'd be really useful to have a, a firewall rule so that traffic can actually flow. And then I commit that. So that's the PanOS terminology for making all of those changes live. And then I get to test it. That's a whole bunch of stuff that I have to do. So you can see why this is prime for automation because if we do this as we're gonna do in the demo, there's some preparation. So you saw, you saw that I went and got the VPC ID. Um, you wanna make sure that you're applying this to the right firewall uh, and check its firewall IP address um, so that you can give that to AWS to allow the tunnel to be built to the right address. But that's about it. The rest is just pressing the go button. Um, because Ansible does all of the information retrieval from AWS that I was talking about, pulling all those settings, pulling the IP addresses. Um, then it does all the configuration work. I've even got it doing the ping test at the end. And then as a conclusion, you can go back and look at the job, see that it worked, see that it executed. If there was a problem, where did it stop? Where did it fail? But most likely, and hopefully to today's demo, it all works smoothly. And you can go back and audit that, see what happened, see what IP addresses were involved, what settings were involved, but you haven't had to do a whole bunch of work here. Um, and there's no hard coding of, of anything really along the way. So let's go back and see how we're doing. Um, let me just flip that across so I can turn the follow on. In fact, I'll turn the follow off now so I can talk you through it. So we've created a virtual gateway, customer gateway, VPN connection. If I go back here uh, to AWS and refresh this, we should hopefully see those coming in. And you can see they're all prefixed with T1735, which was the project name I gave so that we can tag everything with the right name. So we've got a virtual gateway, customer gateway, and a site-to-site -site VPN connection. Uh, if we look at the tunnel details down here, you can see these are random IP addresses. Um, don't know what those are ahead of time. Um, so not only are we, as Ansible, configure this, but it's going to grab those IP addresses and give them to the firewall so that it knows where to build the VPN to, which is exactly what's happening now. So let's skip forward and have a look. Um, so here's the, um, the phase one profiles, the phase one gateways I was talking about. We've got the phase two coming up here with IPsec and the tunnel interfaces and then the tunnels themselves. Um, you can see I've got some tunnel monitors in here. Um, what that is, is sending traffic across the tunnel as soon as it's built in order to try and bring it up and check that it's going to be live. Um, so you don't have to try and force your own test traffic in a way to bring the tunnel up. Uh, it's configured BGP with a peering group uh, with a couple of peers in and the route distribution um, and a firewall rule. And at the moment, it's doing a commit operation. So if I refresh here, there we go. So there's my tunnels. Obviously red at the moment, um, the commit is still ongoing. As you can see, it's just over halfway done. Um, so I'll show you a few other things. We create the tunnels, we created the, uh, the phase one, the gateways for phase one. Um, and we also configured a couple of tunnel interfaces, uh, one each for each of the VPNs. That's the thing with AWS, by the way, the reason there's two of everything, if you weren't um, familiar, when you do stand up a VPN in AWS, you get two VPN endpoints for resiliency and redundancy, standard kind of issue thing with cloud, to be honest, um, to always have um, a couple of everything. Here's my security rule that's been built, very simple rule just for the demo from, from the inside, from the on-prem to, to the VPN zone. Um, I'm just allowing ping and SSH just so we can get some, uh, 
just so we can get some traffic up and running. And uh, what we should see in the traffic logs was my initial ping that was actually, you know, for some reason my uh, my routing table's a bit skew if, but it thought that was a ping going out to the internet. So that's why that failed. Um, so what we're waiting for now, as you can see, the commit's finished as far as Ansible's concerned. I can validate that myself by showing you here that the commit's finished. So this is all live. And what we should see uh, in our tunnels, if all is well, is a whole bunch of green where there was red. So my phase one is up here. My phase two is up here. Status is green. If we go back to AWS and refresh that, um, what we should see if I do a full refresh is one tunnel's up, the other one's about to come up, which is fine. That's what we're expecting. The other one will be a couple of seconds afterwards. And if I go back to the entire workflow job over here, that's that one. Yep, there we go. So the VPN, six minutes. I would challenge any engineer, especially one who's even one who's really familiar with Palo Alto Networks, like myself. I've been here nine years. I don't think I could configure a VPN in six minutes, even if I had all the information to hand. And you're never going to have all the information to hand. Like I said, you're going to need to go and retrieve some of it from AWS. So, um, and then finally, we've done the ping. So I put a little bit of a delay, a uh, minute's delay on that, just to uh, allow the tunnels to both come up. We can see that the ping was successful as well. So that's our workflow. We've done the demo from end to end. Uh, we've done a ping at the start, showed it failed. Did a ping at the end, showed it's going to success. Um, I'll bring the traffic logs up again, make them probably a little bit bigger, actually. Apologies for that. So there you go. Uh, 1736 when we started um, it wasn't something we were allowing we were dropping it we don't want traffic going out to the internet uh, to a private IP address that's fine but now look um, once the VPN's up the traffic goes out of the tunnel interface um, and that's fine it's allowed and we got ping responses we saw a nice green box here uh, showing that the ping was all fine everything was good and that job's complete and I guess just for complete absolute completion uh, I'd like to come back. There we go and see both tunnels are up on the AWS side as well. Um, so, yeah, I kind of ran through that a little bit quick. It was, you know, uh, on the face of it, not a, uh, a massively complex scenario. But if you're not maybe familiar with PanOS and or AWS, there's probably a lot of terminology in there. But hopefully they get the idea. A whole bunch of automated configuration. Didn't need any pre-assumed knowledge. Um, I had IP addresses I'd never seen before from AWS. The Ansible just retrieved for me, sent them to the firewall, built the VPN, and then we did a ping over the, over the tunnel uh, to make sure it was all working at the end. I really hope you enjoyed that demo, which was taken from a live webinar. If you'd like to learn more, you can head to Palo Alto Network's developer portal, pan.dev, where there is a dedicated landing page for Ansible. And on the Ansible website, there is a dedicated page for the Palo Alto Network's integration. And if you'd like to get started yourself, both Red Hat and Palo Alto Networks have free trial periods, which you can use to go and test out this technology for yourself. So you can test out both Ansible Automation Platform and the next generation firewall as a, as a VM series software firewall for free yourselves in your own environment. And of course, if you need any help, please reach out to your Palo Alto Networks or Red Hat representatives.